Welcome to this short video that is introducing the ICAST 2024 Grand Challenge from the Cadenza project. This is all about developing a machine learning system to rebalance stereo music and all the details, the website is fully launched at cadenzachallenge.org. So what is the scenario we are dealing with? So the scenario here is that we're listening to music coming from loudspeakers in a normal stereo setup and we're listening to them via hearing aids. And the idea is to develop a signal processing system that takes the signals at the ears and allows a personal rebalancing of the music. For example, you might decide to amplify the vocals by 6 dB. And there are some obvious approaches you could take here, one of which would be to demix the signals, apply the gain, say 6 dB to the vocals, and then downmix back to stereo again. But we welcome other end-to-end -end approaches as well. Um, so whatever approach you want to take is fine by us. So some of you may have entered demixing challenges and be wondering, well, what's different about this one? Well, the first thing is, is the signals are at the ears rather than the stereo music tracks that you get off the, uh, off the down mix. And what that means is you have crosstalk. So the left stereo, the left loudspeaker signal goes both to the left and the right ear. And that is a frequency dependent effect. The crosstalk is stronger at low frequencies than it is at high frequencies. And that means there's a frequency dependence change in how the music is balanced across the left and right signals at the ears compared to the left and right signals coming out of the loudspeakers. So there's a challenge there because of the signal changes. Also, traditional demixing challenges are allow non-causal approaches, but we're also trying to encourage causal and low latency approaches because in the end, that's what you need for a system that works at the ear. Ira is fine, but if you do low latency, that's a, a very uh, new and noble challenge. So why this challenge at all? Well, we have an aging population. One in 10 people will have disabling hearing loss by 2050, and that's across the world. Uh, hearing loss causes problems when listening to music, it makes lyrics harder to pick out. You lose the high frequencies generally, which means music sounds duller. But don't worry if you're not an expert in hearing aids or hearing loss, because we've set this challenge up to allow a broad community to take part. You can enter this challenge just by looking at the problem of rebalancing the signals, because we provide code for standard hearing aid amplification. And actually, that's not the hardest part of the task. So please don't be put off if you're not a hearing aid or hearing loss expert. So here are the key dates. We've just launched a website last week. Um, it's on the, all these ICAST challenges, the time scale is rather short. So we have evaluation data at the end of November. You submit in December. The great thing is if you do well at the challenge, come in the top five, you'll be invited to present a paper at ICASP. So it's a great way of getting a paper into ICASP and you can come across to Korea. We'll have a special session on the Cadenza challenge where you can present what you did and uh, meet the other entrants. So as with all challenges, we provide a baseline software system. Now our baseline is non-causal and is based on demixing, applying gains and remixing. But as I said, you don't have to take this approach. You could go non-causal, low latency, and you, or you could just not demix. So you don't have to follow exactly what we've done, but this is our baseline. So it's quite a complicated diagram. Let me move myself a little bit out of the way there. Um, so essentially we have the top bit is the bit you're working on, which is the enhancement bit, and all the bottom here is the evaluation. So what we have in green is signals. So this is the original stereo signals that are actually at the loudspeaker. We have a filtering process to allow for the sound propagating from the loudspeakers to the ear. So at this point, we actually have the signals which are on the left-right microphones of the hearing aid. We then process that, then we go to the block that actually is doing the hearing aid processing. So our processing music, what we do, that is a demixing process. So we take those left-right channels and we split them to vocals, bass, drums and other, as is commonly done in a demix challenge. We've just used one of the standard models. We haven't retrained for the at-ear signals, so you can undoubtedly beat our baseline just by doing that. So we have a set of gains which tell you what to do. So it might say, make the, the vocal 6 dB louder, make the bass 6 dB quieter. So we give you a set of gains which you apply to the vocals, bass, drum and other. So you apply those there and add them up. And then you have a stereo version here of a signal, hopefully with the gains of the music changed. This Nalar block here is a standard hearing aid amplification, which we provide. 
And because our evaluation also uses that block, to be honest, when you apply the challenge, you're, you're better off just leaving it is, as it is, although it'd be interesting to see if anyone uh, changes what they do there. And so at the end point, you have your process signal, which is what's coming out of the hearing aid. In that case, it will go down the ear canal of the listener if there was a real listener involved. That hearing aid signal is then compared to a reference. So our metric here is hacky. You could use another metric for your kind of development work. I, I'm sure things like uh, the signal to distortion ratio would be would work and, and be quite useful. But we're using a hearing aid audio quality index. We provide all the code for that for our evaluation stage. So basically, this is comparing the output of the hearing aid signal to a reference. How do we make the reference? Well, we take the vocals, bass, drum and other, which we have because the original music was in stem, so we have that already. We again apply a filter to allow to propagate that signal to the ears, so we have vocals, bass, drum and other at the ears. We apply the same weight and sum process that we did before to apply gains and add them up to make a stereo signal. We apply NALAR again, and that's our reference. Now, I've skipped over a couple of normalization blocks. You'll see there's a LUFS normalization here and a LUFS normalization there. So when you get into the detail of this, we need to, you know, some normalization processes to make sure we don't end up with distortion and other effects in there as well. The other, the kind of inputs to these systems then are the, the desired gains. We have the listener characteristics, which is audiograms. And, and our website's got lots of stuff, uh, which is sort of background knowledge on things like what is an audiogram, if you're not familiar with them. But basically, it tells you how good their hearing is, and it's the most common measure of hearing ability. Why that's there is because you can fit it, and it's needed for this hearing aid amplification. You could fit it into your process somewhere earlier if you want, if you can find a use for it as well. The anechoic HRTFs, head related transfer functions, are being used to propagate the sound from the loudspeaker to the hearing aid. And we're using a standard database for that. So you're changing this enhancement block and this evaluation block you leave as is. You have access to lots of different data at training stage, but when it comes to actually the evaluation stage, what you'll be given is you'll be given the mixture at the hearing aids, the listener characteristics, and the desired gains. So you won't have all of this obviously available at, uh, at the actual stage where you do the evaluation. So as I said, the evaluation is being done using this hacky measurement. You can look that up on our website. It'll tell you more about that. It's quite, it's, a, it's basically a comparison between a reference and correlation process in time frequency bins. Um, but you might want to do something different during the development and that's absolutely fine. And I'm sure a lot of the metrics that are standardly used will work quite well. Um, there's lots of rules, obviously, as we have in this. And I just pulled out a few key ones on our website. You'll find a page with a full set of rules. So the, I think a key one here is in terms of data sets. We're giving you uh, the data set to work with. We don't want you to provide private data. We know a large, if you've got access to big private data, you can improve things. And I don't think it's fair to allow for others who don't have access to that. And that also means we exclude pre-trained models that have worked with private data sets. Pre-trained models on public data sets, fine, but private ones others can't access is not allowed. I've mentioned causality a couple of times but just to emphasize here non-causal uh, approaches are allowed and that's typically what is done in sort of a kind of demix challenge. Now obviously if you've got non-causal processing happening here it's not really as useful so we want to encourage causal real-time approaches um, but because real-time approaches to uh, processing music uh, isn't, isn't as common as in, say speech we're also allowing non-causal approaches. And we say this must be low latency. So what we mean by low latency is you can't look too far ahead to find information in trying to process the signal. And we put that limit at five milliseconds. And that's kind of come standardly from sort of kind of hearing aid processing. You might allow a bit more than that, but basically the problem is if you have sound coming from something out of sync uh, by more than five, let's say 10 milliseconds, it sounds pretty poor on a hearing aid. So that's where that comes from. You can't look too far in the future. Now, we're not restricting computational costs, but we'd like you to report your model size. The reason for that is there may be ways around reducing computational cost, but there's no ways around reducing the fact if you look into the future, because uh, that information isn't known if you're trying to do low latency. So everything is up there on the website, links to download data sets, links to download uh, software and all that. Please join our Google group because that's when people ask questions. We put those up on the Google group so other people can see the answers. 
please register for the challenge. You need to register to be able to download the data. That allows us to see how many people are entering and to manage kind of the process for us. If you've got any questions, cadenzachallengecontact.gmail.com. Uh, you'll find that on the website. And good luck. And uh, hopefully you'll do well and we'll see you in Seoul.